All right, boys and girls. Essential question. How do you find the area of a K-I-T-E, a kite? Oh, yeah. Good old Benjamin Franklin will be proud. So here we go. What I've done, I've drawn a very simple kite right there. You can see it's kite A-D-C-E. And as you remember, a kite, I don't have the tick marks around there, but remember two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides in a quadrilateral uh, make that thing a kite. So there's your kite. Now here's what I've done. I've taken this triangle, or the, the, the kite, and broke it up into some several triangles. And what I'm going to do is show you how we already know a formula that can kind of, we can use it to formulate another idea of how to find the area of an overall kite. So what I've done, I've taken this triangle and I've broken it up into a big triangle up here on the top, which is ADC, with DB being that altitude right there, if you will, of the triangle. And I took this triangle, the green one down here, and ACE is the triangle with BE being the altitude right there. So what I can do is something I already know is to find the area of a triangle. That formula, remember, and one half base times height. So if I use that to find the area of this particular triangle, and I know there's no numbers, but we can use an expression to represent how we'd find the area of this specific one the way that it's labeled. So watch this. The base of my triangle is B, whoops, sorry, AC. Remember DB, the altitude, determines what the base actually is. The height determines the base. So AC is the base and DB is the height. That's all I've done right here. I've plugged in AC for B and DB for H. So this expression right here that I can circle, that guy, that is the expression that would represent how we would find the area of that particular specific triangle the way that it's labeled. Likewise, down here, here's the triangle. The base is determined by the height, so EB is the altitude, that's the height. So that determines that's the base. So you see right here, AC, that's my height. Sorry, that's AC is my base, and BE is the height. So this is now how I would find the area of that particular green triangle. So this is how I'd find the area of that. It represents the area of this, the thing in blue, and the thing blue down here represents the area of that particular green triangle. So, my idea is this. If you take this kite and find the overall area of it, how many little square units can I put in there? Really all I've done is just broken up into two particular shapes. So I'm kind of dividing and conquering, like I've done many times. So as you see down here, the idea is basically this. The, the area of the overall kite, ADCE, is the area of the red triangle, all of it, plus the area of the whole green triangle. Add those two areas together, you're going to get the whole area of the kite. So that's pretty cool. Now you keep watching, because here's what happened. The area of this, I'm going to take this thing, woohoo, and I'm going to put it right in there, because that's the expression that represents the area of the triangle ADC. So this whole thing, I'm going to take and substitute in for area of triangle ADC. This, I'm going to substitute right in there. So when I do that, I have to go to the next slide, but when I do that and I plug that in here, and I plug this expression in there, it's going to create, you'll see here shortly, slide this out of the way, it creates this formula right here, where I plugged in the one-half ACDB in for that triangle, and one-half ACBE in for that triangle. Now here's the deal, we're getting, to, we're getting to the point. If I take these two things and add them together, now wait a minute, algebraniacs, get ready for this. What I see is in this particular red term, I see a common factor right here that is the same exact thing that's over here in the green term. So whenever you have common factors in two different terms, you can factor those common factors out, algebra stuff, and get a factored answer, if you will, a more simplified answer. I'll give you an example, if I, if I get away. You see, a look back. Algebra, you did this. If you had an expression where it was 2y plus 2w, you looked at that expression, that binomial, if you will, and said, wait, it has a common factor of 2, a GCF, a greatest common factor of 2. So you can factor out the 2 and then put that in front. It's kind of like you're undistributing, if you will. You're taking out the newspaper. You're taking away that common factor, whatever, as we talked about in class. So you take the 2, boop, pop it away, pop it away. So this would be your factored, simplified expression. Same thing here. If I get a little more depth, 2xy, 2xw, the common factor happens to be 2x. That's the GCF. So I can take that 2x and factor it out of this expression, factor out of this expression, which means 2x, the GCF, goes in front, and whatever's left goes in the parentheses. Why do I show you that? Because look, this is my common factor, 1 half AC, 1 half AC. So I can factor that out, 
factor that out, if you will, U. And when I factor that out and put it in front, what's left is DB and BE. Who cares, Mr. Moner? Why is that important? Take a look. If I look at what DB plus BE actually is in the picture that's over here, DB is this piece, BE is this piece. Now what is that? Oh, that whole thing from D down to E is actually one diagonal of the kite. Who cares? So wait, that's one, one diagonal, DE. AC, if you look at the picture, is the other diagonal. So all I've done is just through all this stuff, I've shown you exactly how you can use the area of triangles to formulate and or prove a different way to find the area of a kite right there. So believe it or not, that is your formula. You've got to take one half times the length of one diagonal times the length of the other diagonal. And I'll put that up here for you. It is a theorem. It's pretty cool. So here you go. Theorem 105. It says the area of a kite. So here's your basic kite. The formula is area of a kite equals one half times the length of diagonal number one times the length of the other diagonal. So you've got to find the length of those diagonals however you need to. Put them in there and take one half times that one and then times that one. Key point here is sometimes people make mistakes. You do not distribute the one half through these two things. It's multiplication. If you had two times four times five, you sure wouldn't take the two and distribute to the four and the five. You don't do that here either. You would take the two times four and get eight, and then the eight times five and get 40. Same concept applies. You don't distribute the one half. So back to this. Here's a simple example to show you how it works. Find the area of this particular kite. Well, simple kite, I got that piece right there to be five. That piece is nine. Wait a minute, that means the whole diagonal length then has to be 14. So in my formula, I put 14 right there for the length of the one diagonal. Now all I have to do is find the length of the other diagonal, put it in there, multiply it, and I'm done. So how do I find that? Well, if I look at the picture, this piece right here is four. And from the properties of a kite, we know that not only are they perpendicular, the diagonals that is, they also bisect right there. Because remember, one of the diagonals is the perpendicular bisector of the other one in the kite. That's important because if this little piece is four, then of course that means this is four. So the whole diagonal is eight. So that makes this eight. Sweet. So there you go. So you can take one half times 14, which gives you seven. And take that times each other and you get 56 units squared. So that will be your simple answer to that. So next couple slides are going to be some examples. So let's go through some examples, show you how this works. Slide this out the way. Two examples. I got this one done already. Now I'll kind of walk you through the number three. But as you see, here's another kite. This side length right here is giving you to be 13. All three of these little pieces are congruent. That's given to you. And that piece right there is five. Well, to find the area of a kite, I've got to find the length of one diagonal and the length of the other diagonal. Well, wait a minute. I put this 10 in here right away because that's pretty simple because I know that this is congruent to this guy, so this has to be 5. Might as well put this in there too because that's 5 as well. So I know the one diagonal right there, that guy is definitely 10, so check. We got that. How did this 17 come about? Well, I need to figure out the other length of the diagonal, so all I need to really figure out is this distance from here to here. I know that's 5. I just got to figure this out. Well, if I look at the triangle down here in the bottom, I see a 5 for one leg and a 13 for the hypotenuse. So that rings a bell to me. Sounds like a triple, and it is. That's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. And you can use a Pythagorean theorem too, but triples are quicker. So 5 and 12 is 17. Whoops, sorry, 17. So I take these guys times each other, multiply, 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 aka, aka. What? 1 half times 10 gives me 5. 5 times 17 gives me 85 units squared, and I'm done. There you go. Next one. Check this one out. Uh oh, now we're rearing the old 30, 60, 90 again. So you see this kite. One diagonal is given to you to be 20. One side length of the kite is given to you to be 16, so it's yellow. And that angle right there is 30. Uh-oh, that should ring a bell to you. As soon as you see, see 30, you should be thinking 30, 60, 90. Don't know if we're going to need it or not, but you at least should be thinking it. So what do I need to do? One half diagonal one times diagonal number two. Diagonal number one happens to be 12 already, or 20. We're already given that. I just got to figure out the length of the other diagonal. That happens to be that one right there. Well, how do I find it? Well, maybe we do have to use that 30, 60, 90 triangle. Check this out. If I look at just this triangle right here, that is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. There's your 90 degrees because remember the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. 
So this is 30, and remember in my 30, 60, 90 triangle, x is what's across from 30, x root 3 is what's across from third, or 60, and 2x is what's across from 90. So in this picture, here's my 30, that's going to be x. Here's my 90 degrees, so across from that is going to be 2x, and there's my equation. So that means simply 16 equals 2x, so x equals 8. So there's the x value, that's what I'm looking for. So I take that 8 and plug it right in here. Oh, that's actually nice. That's 8. Therefore, this down here has to be 8 because we just talked about this. The diagonal is bisected. Not that this means anything, but this right here would be 8 root 3. It doesn't mean anything because you already had the one length of the diagonal is 20, so don't get confused. Although it is 8 root 3 from this point right here down to the middle point right there. Or not the middle point, but you get the idea. So, we got 16 is the length of this diagonal, so 16 goes right there. And we got everything we need. Let's just multiply it out. 1 half times 20 gives me 10. 10 times 16 gives me 160 units squared, and we're done. Let's do one more. Slide this out of the way. All right, sorry, I'm back. My battery's ran out on the uh, camera, so that's why this is kind of choppy and sl it's placed together. But um, here's the last slide I want to give you. It's going to be an example that I'll, I'll, I'll set the stage for you, and then I want you to pause the video, and I want you to do it. Um, believe 100% you'll be able to do it. Go back and look at the other parts of this video if you need to. Uh, but I think you'll be able to do it totally. And then, of course, after you're done pausing it, give it, a, give it a whirl, get the answer, hit play again, and I should be back on unless it's another video. Um, but I want you to see the answer then. So here we go. Example number four. The area of a kite is 20. So this kite that's given, we'll say the area of it is exactly 20. Units, whatever it is. Units squared. The longer diagonal is 8, so it gives it the horizontal diagonal is actually 8. So there you see it. The question is to find the shorter diagonal. Now, actually, this would probably say find the length of the shorter diagonal because some of you are probably saying, oh, I can find it. It's right there. See it? Right. Right. Well, I, I don't mean that. <laughs> I mean the length. So find the length of the diagonal. So give it a whirl. Good luck. Pause this video right now, and I'll show you how to do it here in a little bit. Good luck.